This is the story of my attempt to learn to be French before my beard goes from this to this. How well can I memorize the most important French references before my beard grows back? Now, why would I want to do that? On one hand, because I live in France and on the other hand, because, why not? <laughs> this is the reason why I start most projects in life. If you're a foreigner looking to become a French citizen, this is probably what you should be doing too. Now, according to the French government, you need two things to qualify as being French. One, you need to know a bit of French history and two, you need to agree with the French principles. Now, there's a test about this and then they decide whether they want to give you the citizenship or not. But there are so many dates to remember. They actually wrote it down in a book. Typical French. It's called the Livre du Citoyen and I printed this out to just have a look at what I need to know. Now, my first step is going to be to go through this book and see how much I can retain in my mind. If it's too complicated for me, then I'll have to bring in the big guns. And the final test to see whether I learned this well is going to be doing a little mock towards the end. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'll figure that out in the end. Now it's time for me to get to the reading part, the step one. To be clear, I'm a noob with French history. For India, I know when our Republic Day is, 26th January. And the French are probably expecting me to know their Republic Day as well. How many Republics are there? Third Republic, Fourth Republic, and the f there are five Republics in France. Now I'm counting on this book to be my Bible. I don't want to read five different books. Well, what do you know? Right in the center of the book, First Republic, and the third republic. Now it took me two hours to go through the whole book, just scoping out all the parts that I need to memorize. Some of these things I don't even understand, let alone memorize. For example, have a look at this. It says it is forbidden to do an apology or to apologize for crimes against humanity. But that doesn't feel right. I looked up the same word phrase, faire l'apologie des crimes contre l'humanité. The definition of an apology in this case is not the same. I mean, admitting that something was not fair can sound like an apology, right? Make the apology. No, what I understood from me was that we can't demand pardon. In English, it's like. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, no, no. Apology is not at all the same as the term in English. Apology is to say that it's wrong. I see. Sufficiently clear for me. Thank you very much, Marion. No problem. Salut. I thought I speak this language fluently, and then there's. Page number four. This is why I wrote down in my Excel every time I learned something new in the French language because when you're looking for something about the French language online, you never get the answer. So my first impressions of this book, it's like a really fancy history book. It has a lot of dates, a lot of facts. I have no idea how I memorized Indian history as a child. Now I've reached saturation for today. Let's get back to this tomorrow. I need to find another way to do this. I fell asleep thinking about the big guns. So day two began with more hope. This time around, I want to highlight the facts that I'm sure I won't remember. And then I'll put those facts on Anki. So my big guns approach is threefold. Firstly, like I told you already, I'm going to highlight all the facts that I know I can't remember. Secondly, I'll upload everything to Anki Droid. And thirdly, I'll practice it till the cows come home. I have a feeling that my beard won't go too long before I finish this book. The highlighting step is the easiest. There is zero memorizing involved, just spotting dates and descriptive questions that I know I can't answer. I spent a total of four hours doing this. It took this long because some of the facts I read seemed sus. So I decided to do some fact checking as well. I don't think this is the latest information. France is the fifth puissance mondiale economic Power. Now, according to the World Bank, France is seventh on the list as of 2021. The book also says that there are 200 million people who speak French, 76 million native speakers and 274 million fluent French speakers. I just figured out that this version of the Livre du Citoyen is from 2015. Turns out that there is a new version from 2022. In the new version, instead of saying the fifth, they say the sixth, actually it's the seventh and it's still at 200 million speakers. I don't think there's much of a difference in this version. The historic dates and stuff, all of this is comparable. It's the same as the old one. So I think I'll just stick with my 2050 version. Now there's so much information that I've already highlighted in this book and now I need to learn to memorize it. First, I'm going to write down all the dates into Anki Droid and then I'm going to write down all the descriptive long form answers. This is going to be the most boring, laborious part of the exercise. So I have to turn my brain off, maybe play some music and just enter the stuff into Anki Droid. Now I started typing each Anki card by hand. Writing by hand is the slowest thing ever and I wasted a lot of time doing this. It's been two hours that I'm mindlessly writing into Anki Droid and I can't do any more friends. I've already downloaded this new PDF. I'd rather just copy paste it from there. My time is better used studying these cards than just the sad data entry job. Now I find it easier to highlight on paper instead of on a PDF on a computer. But you can see on the screen over here, I'm copying all the facts from the PDF 
to Anki. Just looking at my paper and copying that equivalent onto Anki. So the last three days, I've been entering into Anki Droid the first nine pages. And in the next 20 minutes, I finished the rest of the 13 odd pages remaining. All that I've done up until this point, in fact, is preparing for my study session. I haven't memorized anything yet. The real study starts now after collecting all the facts and materials that I'm expected to know. If you're starting with Anki, don't waste your time writing things down. There is no added value. Instead, just copy it from an online source and spend time practicing it. That's a better use of your time. When I was a kid, I would just repeat a date in my head like a hundred times while doing this rocking motion for some reason. Or remember the date in a trick kind of way, like 1789 is one of the most important dates in this book and 789 are consecutive numbers. But with Anki, I just need to put it where Instagram used to be. My rule is once the app is open, I have to do 20 cards before closing my phone. So I just look at a question and try to answer it. If it was right, I tap on the right, else on the left. Anki notes down the timestamp and brings it back to me after a period of time, where I should have forgotten it. I love that some practice sessions can be done in under two minutes and I can do it on my Android, my iPhone or on my computer. And Anki syncs it all together. Now it's quite boring to sit down and do Anki for a fat hour a day, but because I spaced it out, I didn't realize the amount of time I was spending on this app. It takes me two minutes each time I open the app to follow my rule and I opened it a good 15, 20 times a day. And it didn't really feel like hard work. It's been like 760 69 hours since I started working on this for the first time. I still feel like I'm not prepared for this. So I have a special guest who will quiz me on this tomorrow. It feels so weird to say that I'm prepared for an exam without having written anything on a piece of paper. So I did my last revision on a piece of paper because this is how I've prepared for academia all my life. Now I can sleep well tonight. Now that I'm done with my revision, I just need to turn my brain off and go to bed. Tomorrow will be a new day with the exam. I have Rita over, a good friend of mine over from Easy French. We have worked on a couple of projects together. I look up to Rita and her level of French. Of course, she's French because she's doing so many street interviews and stuff like that. I want to have the same kind of delivery. That's why I have her over on this video. She's going to ask me pretending to be the one who's going to interview me. And then we'll ask Rita what she thinks about it. All right, let's do it. Bon, déjà, bonjour. Bonjour, madame. Pourquoi voulez-vous devenir français? J'aimerais devenir français pour améliorer ou bâtir, construire mon activité professionnelle chez L'Oréal. Je travaille actuellement en informatique décisionnelle et j'aimerais développer ça comme carrière. Je m'identifie avec les principes et les valeurs françaises. Now, the first question she asked me is systematically the first question they ask in every citizenship interview. I've prepared for it for sure, but hearing Rita's feedback on this was really valuable. She suggested that I lead with the French values instead of the professional aspect, which makes sense in hindsight. We went on for a half hour on this and after the interview, she shared her feedback on all my answers. While her feedback seems obvious, you don't find them on the internet and you don't think of them when you're stressed. I was so nervous and I didn't even set the white balance on this. This is why the colors are so wonky on this one. So I need to prepare this again before my final interview date, keeping in mind the stuff that Rita just shared with me. On your man and or not? Rita. I think I, did, I think I did pretty okay. If you want to have a look at the whole journey, check out my website where I have documented my entire preparation. You'll also find all the tips that Rita gave me per question that she asked in the full unedited version. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Keep learning.